All right, now you should just uh, be able to request to join once you uh, see that. Once you see that you're in, the, that you're on live in there. Yep. All right. Yep. New activity. Let me refresh a little bit. I'm going to have to start putting together. You get request to join. Uh, I've never done it, you know, but it, it's in there somewhere. I think I might have to start providing directions or I might just bail out <clears throat> and start using Zoom for God's sake. This thing seems to give everybody trouble. Right. I've done a couple of them myself and it was like once I just get in, I click the button and I'm in. But yeah, it's, it just it, it takes a little bit for it to go. All right, I think we're good to go. Yep, Drew Massey wants to be in my video. Proof. Here we go, you're on. All right, see you in a minute. All right, guys. Sorry for the false starts. You know, we uh, oh, got a little right. there. But I got him in the game now. Drew the man massy. That beard is looking like luxurious right now. Like, dude, it is. It is gnarly, so son. thick right now. It's, so I trained the Central guys soccer team, and they're they're actually they're like five and zero oh right now. So they uh, they have requested that I not do anything with the beard until they win the district, and then if they win the district. Then one of the freshmen, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but like it's it's like the monkey, it's like the monkey tail beard. Oh yeah. And it comes all the way around. Yeah. And so one of the freshmen was like, if we win district, you got it, you gotta rock one day with the monkey tail, and then you can shave everything oh. else off. Oh. So yeah, so like it's the crazy things you do for like your your, your high school athletes. Yeah, man. But yeah, man, it's uh, it is very uh it's uh it's full right. So to be clear, they actually got you to agree to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely agree to that. Right. So we, uh, we have a uh, yeah. I, I need to like see I that said, captured on so social much. media once you do it. Oh, it, it will like the, it will probably be an event. Like we probably will like you know call up my guy Rory at Southern Edge Barbershop and either bring him to game time yeah. and do it, or we'll bring the team to to uh, to um, to the barbershop and let them watch. There you go there for you sure. Go. Yeah. All right. It'll be it'll be a good time. Hey, Kagan, will you come get Chloe, please? I got to do this live. Kagan, get in here and get the dog. Stop playing. Let's go. <laughs> Not playing with you right now. You know that. Sorry, man. You're good. You know how it goes. No big deal here. Uh, right? I got it. I understand. I'm picking mine up at 3 o'clock today. I mean, we're, me and her, you know, we do school together every day. So we just got done with school. So we're both smoked. And I uh, figured I would just do this next. So, um, right. Anyway, those of you. That's so crazy. Is, that, is that not the craziest thing right now? Is like to like be your kid's dad and teacher and like if they play sports, like. Uh, you know, coach and like, when does like, how did that, how does it, uh, how do you separate those roles, man? Like, that's a tough, it's a tough juggle right now, for sure. It is. I mean, I could probably do a whole live and a podcast on that. Luckily, me and Kagan communicate really well with each other. And if she's having a bad day or I'm having a bad day at it, we, we debrief and talk about how we can do better. And um, yeah, I, it's, it's really challenging. I'll tell you that. I just feel super grateful that I'm, able to fill that void um i don't feel comfortable with her wearing a mask all day in school and I, some people watching this may disagree and we can agree to disagree but <clears throat> i just i just can't do it you know it just doesn't feel right for me and maybe it's all the right. the nerding out on breathing and respiration i've done over the past couple of years but um yeah so we just made a decision to keep her home and it's going pretty well we got about eight more weeks left and after that i'll you know hopefully be able to get some things done <laughs> until then right. the, the priority is yeah. the priority you know yeah you're exactly right like that's uh like so hope school doesn't have that necessary mandate you can you, they're there it's up to them as an individual that's awesome. but they they do do contact tracing so like that it sh we may get a call today that's like you know she's been contact traced and she's got to be home for the next two weeks or whatever it might be and and, and whatnot so 
we always, you know, there's always that possibility. So it's very, it's, it's definitely one of those things where communication is, is, is very, very important because like you said, like some days, like she just like, I just don't have it today. Like I'm out. And like some other days I'm like, I, I don't know, babe, like I got a lot of things on my mind and on my plate or whatever. And like, we're going to have to back up and punt and then we'll revisit, you know, later. So yeah, that's, that's our move. Definitely I mean, there's like, we've got it all done today. There's some days that we take a break till about one or two and then finish it. And, um, yep. so, you know, just you, you do what yep. you got to do. Right. Hey, there are whole teams. So like, and I know we can talk about this forever too, but there are whole teams. And I, and I think this probably is very smart because of the contact tracing in order for them to have a season, because what ends up happening is if, 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 if you and I are on the same baseball team, right. And, and you come down with it, then our whole baseball team is, is done for two weeks. Yep. Regardless if I'm healthy, if I'm not healthy, it doesn't, doesn't matter if we're done for two weeks all those games that we miss in two weeks don't count against us. Mm -hmm. Like they don't go as L's in the column, but they go as W's in the teams that we play. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So like uh, one of the, one of the uh, like probably the more innovative coaches in the area, his name's Paul Lamb. He's at Spring Hill high school. He, he's like, look, Every, every one of my baseball players, you, you, you need to strongly – I don't know that he can make them, so let me make sure because I know we're live and people see us. But, like, I don't think he made them, but I think it, it was strongly suggested that everybody go virtual because then they didn't have to work. Yeah. yeah. And at least they could have their season, you know what I mean? So it's just that was an interesting tactic, I think, sure. to, to be able to play, you know. Well, before we go too far down that rabbit hole, I probably should introduce you to right. some people. I mean, I think a lot of people in this group probably already know you, but – um, you know, you're, you're an OG in this thing and, uh, you've been around the block, you know, long as me, or at least in that, in that area, that's for sure. Um, and I remember, you know, first time that we met was at, uh, Mike Robertson's place when that, uh, Nick Winkleman and Lee Taft seminar was on. Lee, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Wow. like, I remember just kind of wow. watching, like you were engaging both speakers <clears throat> and, uh, it seemed like they knew you to a degree. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna pay attention to this guy. And, um, then I heard the Southern draw and I was like, Hmm, this guy might be from the South, you know, and then to right. find out you're like almost right down the street. I mean, 35, 40 minutes away. And, um, in yep, my opinion, it's sure. a shame that we don't do more together because of that close proximity. I but, agree. you know, you're one of those guys that, um, you know, if I ever need to bounce any ideas off of, you're one of the first guys that comes to the top of that list. Uh, we did our CFSC at Drew's facility, uh, in Tennessee. And he's somebody that I hope will do some more in staffs for us here in the future as well. So, Got a lot of respect for Drew, not only as a professional, uh, but as a dad, as you, you know, the banter before we started about parenthood and um, raising little girls, you know, he's, he's very familiar with that as well. So something we definitely connect on. A lot, a lot of good dads in this industry, man. And uh, I'm just yeah. happy that I've been able to catch up with, with quite a few of them. I got Brendan coming on again uh, real soon. Oh, good. Or for the first time, we scheduled it before. I got Mike Robertson coming on. Uh, I've had Devin Gage on. It's funny, like all the guys that like are great dads. That's a, that's a lot. They, of, yeah, they get in the lineup. Yeah. So anyway, so the that's, way that this goes is pretty just general advice. Until I get the temperature of this group on like what they really need, um, we're starting with kind of three questions centered around advice. All right. So the okay. the first question is, what advice like do you think people should take more heed of that they already know about? And the example that I use here is. From a business perspective, I was told from the very beginning that I should focus on email marketing. Uh, I even shared something yesterday from uh, John Goodman at the PTBC that their Instagram account got shut down. They, they got, yeah, they, for no, they didn't really have a, get a reason either. Exactly. Right? Like no they, reason, no nothing. Right. And that, that even hammers that message home even more. Like, listen, you own your email list. You don't own your following. And I've talked a lot about the difference in building a business versus building a following. Um, but that is one piece of like super common advice that in my experience, a lot of people go, hey, thanks for the input. And then they do whatever they want to do. So does anything like that come to mind for you off the top of your head? Like common advice you think most people should take, but they often don't. Uh, the one that like literally just jumps out in my head is, is, is the KISS principle. And I, I, not to go down the, not from a training standpoint, not from like a methodology standpoint, but you know, keep it simple. 
and 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 keep it simple stupid like i literally think and i i'm not one of those guys that are like you know don't call people stupid like for real like keep it simple stupid yeah. because you know that's one of those things where this thing can get really complicated really quick if you let it yeah and i think that i have always found that when i start to get a little bit um overwhelmed or a little bit anxious about something that if you just kind of calm down and be like okay what my question my my one question that i always go back to and it's the one simple it's and we have it in my office it's you know the one simple question upon which all decisions are made and it's literally what is the best thing for game time mm -hmm. and when we can answer like if we answer that what's the best thing for game time it usually uh, it has, it, it, I, I won't say it's yet to fail me, but it, it, it always at least sends me in the right path. Yeah. And I think that one simple question, what is the best thing for game time regarding any situation, just allows me, at least me, to keep everything simple. And, and, and because if you can't answer that question, right, like it'd be the same thing for you, it, you know, if we're making a decision on something or we're going to start this or, or, or whatever, or we're going to allow this or not allow this, or uh, what does this system look like? Like if you just said, okay, what's the best decision for BCI? Yeah. Okay. Does that, if it, if it makes sense, then yes, let's go with it and let's go in that direction. And if it doesn't, then, you know, there's no, pro like I have no problem. Yeah. Like, no problem. I think a lot of people <clears throat> in a lot of ways, whether it is, if we are talking about training, or we're talking about marketing or sales. <clears throat> I think a lot of people confuse uh, complexity with effectiveness. They think that uh, yeah, you know, the, the more complex it is, the more valuable it must be. And in my experience, that is never true. Like you said, the simplest way of getting things done that stays true to what the needs are of your business is probably where your focus should be. And when I say the needs of your business, that's all relative to the space you have, the staff you have, the competency that you have in all of these areas. So that idea of like keeping things simple, uh, that's not so simple for people, <laughs> you know? So I think right. it takes a lot, like you yeah. have to be, you have to have a lot of self-awareness of like, are we making this more complex for the sake of impressing our peers? I know that was a problem of mine early on. I was way too worried about what my peers thought, not so much like how is this training program or this process connecting with the end user, the person's actually paying you, right? So, yeah, that's a great point. That, that's a very good point because I think we get, um, it, it is, we, you know, you could call it imposter syndrome or whatever, but it's really easy to start to design, like, you know, I know when I was younger, you know, uh, Mark Verstegen and Exos and all that kind of came out, like that was when they first kind of came into the mainstream and, you know, obviously that's a fantastic sure. system and, and, and things of that nature. And like, you almost kind of start to, at least for us or for myself, it was like, okay, like I want to be able to, if, if, if somebody from Exos walked into the room, like they'd be like, oh, like this is, we're recreating, like it, it's the same thing, but it, it can't be the same thing because it's not at the same place. It, yep. You don't have the same uh, staff. You don't have the same uh, logistical, uh, you know, equipment. You don't have a, a lot of that other stuff. So that's where, you, you know, what is the best thing for the people that are right in front yeah, of you? Yeah, man. What are the, like, the people that pay your bills, the people that literally allow you to, to, to sustain your business, what's the best decision that's going to affect them in the most positive way yeah. uh, when it, regarding, regarding your business decisions? You know, whether that's pricing, whether that's marketing, whether that's, you know, programming an exercise, whether that's buying a piece of equipment. Yes. Andy, you know, if it doesn't, if, if the equipment does, it may be the greatest piece of equipment in the world. If it doesn't fit logistically and it's not the best thing for our members, then it's, you know, we're not going to, and, and I can't buy four or five of them, then I'm not going to buy it. You know, I can't, can't do it. Another thing that comes to mind, like I remember probably 15 years ago or <clears throat> so, it's funny, like I say 10 and 15 years so much, I would just want to be fully transparent. 10 years could mean eight, 10 years could mean 15. You know, memory gets foggy when you've been doing this this long. But I remember a very long period of time ago before I had like a real relationship with a uh, house. Um, I was running tier system with one of the schools we had a contract with. 
And I was kind of getting lost in the minutia. Like our ex I built out an exercise pool that was way too big. And I remember sending an email to him back then because I didn't have his phone number at that point. And, was, you know, just kind of rattling off, uh, do you think this is good? And I just remember him replying mm -hmm. back, like, just do a three by three. That's it. Just do a three tier deep, three day a week deal. And I was like, huh. it was almost like the answer was so simple to him because of his experience. And I think that's what I see is that when people first get started, they can't really systemize their programming because of the complexity of all that. They, it's really hard for them to make a decision on like, what is simple? What is the simplest and most effective way of us doing these things? And I think that's why programs like CFSC are good for people to lean on, uh, looking at the way we do things, the way you guys do things, look at the way Boyle does things as a whole, because they give you insight into how people have taken systems, modified them and made them scalable, but still being very effective at the same time. You know, so. It's hard when you're young, though, to see that because you want to stand out. You want to show people how good you are. Um, and a lot of well-intentioned efforts fall short of making the impact uh, that you could make for that reason, in my experience. I, I completely agree with that. I think that that is probably the, the biggest question that I answer when people reach out to me is, is, you know, what about this progression and this, and like, do you think we should do this? And I'm like, ah, you know, I don't know. Can they, can they body squat the heavy, or can they goblet squat the heaviest dumbbell in your facility for sets of 10? And if, if they can't like, you know, we probably don't need safety bars. Right. If they, you know what I mean? Like that's, it's, it's just, uh, um, it's just one of those things where, and I think that does, uh, you know, and I get it, you know, being young and being in the industry. And I mean, you know, as well as I do, we used to get a new thing every month, oh, yeah. maybe every three months would come along something new. And now it seems like there's new stuff every 15, 20, 30 minutes, you know, if you're looking at stuff, but, um, uh, so in order to, you know, kind of make yourself stand out or to differentiate your business from other people that are playing the same game in, in your neighborhood, um, I can kind of understand that a little bit, but it all goes back to, you know, what's the best thing for the people that are in front of me. And, you know, am I doing that really, really well? Because if you do something really, really well, I mean, really, really well, then uh, that in and of itself will 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 fix a lot of a lot of issues that you're having. I couldn't um, agree. Yeah. Just get really, really good. Yep. Get really, really good. So that's great career advice. Get really, really good. Get really yeah, good. I mean, get really good. I don't care if you're a chef. I don't care if simple, you're running. True. Yeah get really really good i don't care if you're the guy at the gas station running the cash register you know the best way to advance get really really good at running that cash yep. register. and and i think you there's a guys in general like layering everybody. skills like <clears throat> in the beginning you've got to be really good at the training and the coaching right and mm -hmm. you still have to be competent at these other areas but your focus should probably be on like can i really deliver a good product can i really deliver a good session right and then there's these other skill sets that Hopefully you're becoming more competent at just by way of experience, marketing, sales, communication, leadership, right? But then as, as you can check that box, like, man, I'm pretty damn good at this. Like that next skill becomes the one that deserves your focus. And then the next skill and the next yep. skill, because being great at running a sport performance business is less, in my opinion, about the X's and O's of your program and more about your ability to connect with your athletes, move them closer to their goals, make an impact in your community, because those things are what's required to have bodies in your gym. Nobody cares if you have the best training program in the world, if it's not communicated well, it's not executed well, and you're not really making an impact. Yeah, no, I, you, you know, and I go back to, and I can't remember who quoted it. I like to try to give credit where credit, credit's due, but I don't know exactly who quoted it. But just like you said, you can write me the best program that's ever been written. And if I communicate that poorly, because either I don't care enough to uh, about the people that are standing in front of me, or I'm not competent enough in my in my in my coaching skills yep. to um, to send that to send the message that that program is capable of, then I can take somebody with a with, with a great communication skills, with great coaching skills, and a poor program, 
and yield better results. And we see it everywhere. Everybody complains about the footwork guys. They complain about the guy down the street. He's not certified. He, you know, if he's got more clients right. than you, he's doing something right. Something, something. You got it. You got to start to look for that stuff. Like, okay, what's he doing, or what's what are they doing that that we're not? Like, are they, do they have a better culture? Yes. Do they have a better community of people? Do they do something uh, that 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 brings those the people that come there together and they feel like they're a part of something? Yeah. And, and maybe that's the, you know even if it's that like. Um, it, it, the more I get into this, Andy, the, the, the less it has to do with exercise. One million percent. Like there's got good, there's a good lesson in this because, uh, we talked about it here recently. There, there's a guy in our town a little farther away from us and he does, uh, I don't know. He basically does like sport specific work and calls it okay. speed and agility. Right. And he's mm -hmm. got a couple of our kids over the years, like kids that have trained with us and then have gone over there and I can say with certainty that our program is better. I can say our coaches are better, but that's because I have context to define that. Right. But what we talk about sure. is like, listen, what we need to do is take note of what he's doing. Good. He's got high energy. He really like brings kids up. Like he makes them believe in themselves. There might be uh, some validity to throwing in some ladder drills every now and then in your warm up because kids love ladder. Like we don't use them, right? I know you guys do, and that's why I brought it. It's like we don't use them, but I tell you what, that's a, an attractive piece for kids. And if you can do it with an in, like in integrity and in alignment with your system, like there's value in that. So instead of you know yeah. looking at the guy down the street and criticizing him. Like you should probably look like what he's doing good because there's probably some things you could learn no matter how long you've been in the game. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think that that's, you know, I start looking at other people and, and, and not necessarily, I guess so probably, you know, competitors in our area. And I always kind of make sure that I know kind of what's coming in and what's, yeah. you know, uh, what's going out and, and things of that nature. And you just look to see like, what what do they do well mm -hmm. you know and is it is it if it's if it's something that they do well and something that we do well then you know my hat's off to you and 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 you you do you and we'll stay here but if it's something that you do well that i'm not doing as well then then that's again going back to you know hey where we need to put our focus and how can we how can we bring that level up because that might be i mean you know the chain of the, the weak link in the chain yep. analogy comes rears its ugly head again like where where's our weakest link is if it's you know is it our check-in system is that is that complicated yep. and they have an easy one okay well then what's their what's their system and let's look at that and let's see what 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 we can do to do that better and it's just you know goes back to the you know and i know this is not a talk on on ladder drills and whether or not they're effective i think we both know the answer yep. to that but in our system when we look at how we want to warm up our athletes and our middle school kids uh, and our high school kids and our, and our, and even the professional guys that we train, they've probably grown up doing it. Yeah. So it's probably something they're, they're comp, they're, they're confident, especially at the, at the higher level. So, uh, and for us, it's three minutes yeah. of a CNS warm up, you know, and, uh, and if that gets them a little bit more jacked up and if like another parent sees it and they're like, oh, like we're gonna send our kid over here because oh, they do, they do that. Yeah. So, you know, it serves, it serves multiple purposes, uh, you know, whether or not, do I think that it increases coordination in young kids? Absolutely. Do I think that it, that it increases foot speed and, in, in older athletes? Not at right. all. But, you know, what's the per, you know, always goes back. What's the purpose? Is this the best thing for game time? Yeah what who are, who are the people that we have uh sitting in front of yeah, all right let's change because there's some dad right there's some dad out there that has seen it or or, or watched the latest thing that mahomes is doing out at stroop's place and, and whatever and says well that must be the reason that 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 he's that he's where he is because he does that and i think you and i mean if you've been in this game long enough you know that that's like he was probably going to the league anyway <laughs> you know what i mean uh, he was probably going anyway, and and just because somebody can express um, athleticism, it doesn't mean that that's what they have done to create that athleticism. That's a good one right there. Should write that one down.
Right. Well, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's, let's <laughs> yeah, change he's course a, a little bit here. So like, I can go back and let's change like yeah. uncommon advice. All right. So this is uh, another one, right? Like that. I think people, there's a lot of like normal advice we all hear, like, like lay out your values, have an X amount of year plan. Uh, when we program, program backwards, right? So un uncommon advice is something I think people need more of because in a world of content creation, you see a lot of just stuff regurgitated over and over and over and over again, okay? Um, a piece of uncommon advice that I give a lot of people um, is to quit relying on digital marketing as your main means of connection and client acquisition. You need to spend a ton of time getting to know your community, being involved in your community. Like that is, that's built my entire business before social media was even around. Seeds planted 18 years ago now are sprouting up uh, with people I knew who now have kids or grandkids who are now coming to our facility. And in, in a, like, I don't hear a lot of people talking about it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I hear most marketing approaches all digitally driven uh, for the most part. So I feel like it's uncommon to rely on this. Like I call it becoming a local legend. Like you want to be so well known in your area that people can't run from you. So that that's an example right there. Um, another one that I've thought a lot yeah. about is like we removed back squatting and bench pressing from our program. And this is the thing, like some parents weren't a fan of this, but if I know one thing that high school athletes are getting a lot of, if they play a sport, it's bench press and back squat. Why am I going to keep hammering the yeah, same they're stuff? They're going to get that you know, anyway. Right. But I might as well make them really good at bench pressing back squatting by not right. bench pressing back exactly. squatting from here. Fill gaps, right? right? So any, anything like that come to mind for you? Um, uh, I will, uh, I'll use a, I'll give you two. I'll give you one that's a spinoff from what you say, because we talk about all the time, like make headlines in your local newspaper. Yep. Um, you know, because I can't tell you how many kids come into our facility and how many moms and dads come train in our adult program because they, they saw me at, at Hope's basketball game and we got to talking about fitness or, 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 or you know, uh, things that, things that uh, happen. Like one of the best compliments I got, and, and, and Chaz Muller is going to kill me if he ever sees this because he's our mayor here in Columbia. And anyway, um, the, uh, one of the ladies, like I got a Facebook message one time. It was like, hey, I saw your daughter at Baskin Robbins or whatever with her mom. And, you know, she was talking about, you know, you know I asked her how game time was going. And then there was like another conversation. Like I wasn't even there. And she said, it, it, it must be pretty cool to be like the, the unofficial mayor of Columbia. And I was like, I, I, like, like, I appreciate that. But like for me, that was a huge Hell compliment, yeah. be, not being cocky. But like at least enough people in, in a in a small ice cream shop in Columbia, Tennessee, when they they hear the word training or they talk about training or they talk about fitness for you know for a purpose, and I, and I'm, I'm so I apologize to offend like any. Uh, I love big box trainers. I think you know, everybody's got to have their start or whatever. But like when they talk about fitness for a purpose, meaning that we're going to train and not just go to Planet Fitness and work out, um, then uh, then then our name is, is, is who comes up. Yeah, and and if, if, if my, if my face is consistent with that, then, then I'm okay. With yeah, become the mayor of sport performance or fitness in your yeah, town. Right. That's yeah, something yeah. I forgot. Yeah. I might've heard Lucas say that a couple years ago or 10 years ago. <laughs> um, <Yeah>. but, uh, <laughs> I, that always resonated with me. And that was something that stuck. Cause like, I want to be the mayor of fitness in my town. I want to be the mayor of sport performance in my town. I want to be known everywhere. And, um, I'll say that this though, like, the more well-known you become, it's a numbers game, right? Like there's going to be more people critical of you too, right? So if, if you only have raving fans in a pursuit of like becoming well-known in your area, um, you probably aren't getting to know enough people yet. There's going to be people that believe you should do things differently. And uh, we talk about this as a staff because we make hard decisions based on what we believe is right. And certain people just don't get a vote. And that's not, you know, that I, I, I'm being dismissive of their opinion. It's just that they don't have the experience context to really, to, for me to validate it, you know? So it's like the opinions of parents, I think you should hear them, but you should not build your program around them. So I'm sure you deal with a lot of the same stuff. Yeah, I, I agree with that as well. Like, I'm never going to let, sorry, I got to walk in here and plug my phone. Yeah, right. But uh, I agree with that. Like, you should never let 
those kind of, you know, you should never let those opinions dictate, you know, how, what you're going to implement into your program. Like you're, you're the reason yep. that they're there. Um, you know, and as far as that goes, like, you know, th there's, there's always going to be like the, 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 the dad of the next future superstar. Oh, yeah. Right. And he's the guy that sits in the, he, he's the guy that sits in the, uh, that sits in, in your facility while your kid's training and watches every little thing that you do and gets angry when the kid takes a water break because he should always be huffing and puffing and sweating. And, that, oh, well, hey, I think that, you know, what if you implemented this uh, at this point in the workout? Like, the, like that, that kid's not going to go anywhere. I got, I, I got it's I not, got a I mean, story on that yeah. that's real and it's recent. Um, we, we had a guy at the end of their contract. Um, he had only been with us three months. Uh, the kid's in 11th grade. He's not really getting recruited um, at a real high level. So the dad's feeling a lot of pressure to increase his recruitability. And so he wants him to get bigger, faster, stronger, as fast as humanly possible. So we, we have meetings with parents often when they have these concerns. Like if they bring it up like to a coach or to me, like I don't just kind of feel that in the lobby. It's like, hey, let's set up a meeting. And like, let's really sit down and, and talk about it so I can explain where we are and where we're going and all those things. And we had a really good conversation, um, but he was trying to get me to do what you said. Like he wanted me to incorporate more things into our program that quite frankly, either A, aren't in align with our philosophy um, or B, thinks he's simply not ready for. There's other boxes he's got to check uh, before we ascend him to that exercise. And um, I explained it calm, rational, you know, took it all in and he, he decided not to sign back up with us. And I, I wished him the best, high-fived him on the way out. When I see the kid in public, I'm going to love him up just like I always do. But he doesn't get a vote on those type of things. You know, and I tell a lot of coaches, like, you're the expert. The parents are not the expert. And, again, I want to be very clear. I'm not saying dismiss the concerns of parents. I'm saying address them head on in the right environment. And if you have built your program around a set of principles, values, and beliefs, you need to own them, not move those things around because of the beliefs that a parent has when he has no real context of what's best for his own child. And quite frankly, he's just feeling the pressure that we got to get results now. It's like, well, should have started training yeah. with this five years ago. Like the majority of our most successful athletes have been with us five years plus. Right. And, and that's one of those things where, like, you know, it's not that the concern is not validated because the concern is very real to that particular individual or, or to that, that particular parent or, or that, that athlete. Um, and as long as you can, you know, as you can head up, and a lot of people also want to be heard. Yeah. Like they want a, a place to vent where they feel safe and, and things of that nature. And as long as you, you meet those things head on and you can, you can kind of keep a calm head about it and, and like in the back of your mind, like, yeah, I know, I think, you know, that exercise is a great exercise. And when he's ready, then we will definitely, you know, incorporate that into his program. But at the same time, like you just said, you know, they don't get a vote. They don't get to dictate what you do uh, because I mean, I've, I've, I've been through the, I've been through the courses i've been through the education i you know i've been through and, and you've been through the same ones it, you know they're not the ones that that spend their weekends away from their family to, to to try to learn the best way to do this they're not the ones that spend their money uh uh you know to go to week-long courses or to take this course at home or whatever it may be to, to, to develop this knowledge and so at the end of the day um you know you're the expert and you've got to be the one that 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 makes those decisions to the best of your knowledge at the current time. Yeah. And, um, and, and those, but, but they're, they're always going to be out there and you're always going to have those critics. And like you said, it's, it's, it's very rarely the, 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 the child or the kid, um, you know, at, at that point, it's, it's more, it's more kind of, you know, how you're dealing with parents and, and how you're dealing with, uh, with the, with the very valid concerns that they have. Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. All right, so this is a gigantic question, again, centered around advice. So you could probably go 100 different ways with this. 
super general. All right. What's your best okay. what's your best advice on how to run a sport performance business that doesn't suck? I use, I use that term a lot and it can mean a lot of different things, but you know, how like what's yeah. your best advice for somebody that like really wants to do this thing and run a sport performance first business? What would be your best advice? Um I'll give uh, it kind of goes back to I'll give you two two examples or, or two two pieces of advice. One will be very general, just based on the question, and two will be something very practical. Okay. Um, something that you're gonna like, like you might need to write it down a little <laughs> bit because it's something it's something that like bit me in the butt yep. too. You know, like, uh, but I'll give you the very general one first. Um, and and this one I can't even take credit for this. Mike Robertson told me this when I when I told him that I was gonna open up my own yep, place. Yep. I just gave this advice yesterday to a guy that called me out of the blue uh, that's going to try to open up an, uh, another spot, uh, his own spot in um, in New York. And uh, Mike said this first. I said, hey, Mike, I'm, I'm getting ready to start, you know, uh, getting ready to, to open up game time. We're almost ready to open. We're, we're kind of doing some things under under the tape, undercover right now. We weren't officially open, but we were doing some trains. Uh, just to kind of feel it out and get used to the space. And Mike said, look, he said, I, I you know, you're going to have days that are really, really good. And you're going to have days that are uh, where everything's clicking and every, like you, you've got signups coming up and, and kids are loving the program and, and you, your, your people are on social media as, as little as social media was at the time. And they're, they're talking about you and everything's going really, really well. He said, and then there's going to have times where like you have really, really bad days and you're going to question whether or not this was the right decision. And you're going to question whether or not this is the career choice that, that, that you need to make. Um, he said, at the end of a year, you know you're in the right business or you're in the right place if those good days outnumber the bad days. And that, to me, and like, I don't know why that hit home yeah. for me so yeah. well, but that piece of advice man it was like it's one of those deals that, again like it's so simple but that piece of advice just hit me in a way that i was like you know what it's kind of like that one question right what's the best thing for game time like that piece of advice that mike gave said uh on the days where like you're like you you kind of feel overwhelmed and like oh my gosh this this payment is due and we hadn't had any new signups this week or 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 you know, I didn't plan on spending eight hundred dollars to get a heater moved six inches forward. Um, you know, those things are heavy. Yeah. Those things are heavy, and those days are heavy. And uh, for whatever reason, man, that just always like you know what though, like that's a heavy thing today. Uh, but I, like at the end of the day, like I'm still my good days still outnumber my. Let, bad days. let me piggyback off and, that for uh, one second, just because I had a thought. You know, when you have those bad days, uh, which over the past 21 years, I've had a ton of them. I, I think it, right. it's really important to reflect on why. And if I look back at the periods that have been hardest for me, I was kind of in a period of transition where I was holding on to too many of the balls, right? I was trying to do everything on my own. And this is one of the hardest things in my experience for a lot of coaches to pivot out of is, like, you shouldn't be doing your books. You shouldn't know who's bouncing payments on you. Like, I remember my first couple of years when I was doing all that, somebody would show up and I would know they bounced the payment on me. And I wanted to like, man, get out. <laughs> but, I didn't have the, yeah. but I didn't have the courage to do that because I was so new in business. And I was like, all right, they'll, they'll pay me back and it'll be okay. But the minute I let go of that, that was huge. I used to lose my mind tax time because my first year in business, I thought I had made so much money only to sit down and get my tax bill where I had to empty my whole bank account, you know? But by, you know, right. taking funds and allocating it towards a good CPA and a bookkeeper and anybody that's listening knows I'm a big fan of Profit First and we go all in on that. Like, we don't try to do it on our own. We hired a Profit First professional and they run that, you know, for our business. And there's a host of other things. Like if yeah. you're not good at marketing or it stresses you out, there's people that you can hire for that, right? Um, and I think that you've got to know, I think the strategic coach folks call it your unique ability, right? Like 
you got to know what your unique ability is where you function at the highest level. And then I always say like hire people to shadow, hide and fill in your weaknesses. And I think by way of doing that, you shift yourself in the possibility of having more good days than bad days because you're functioning in a role that like you're really suited for instead of trying to white knuckle your way through, you know, more difficult tasks that you may not be suited for. Yeah, that's a, that, that's fantastic. And, and we, we, I've read profit first as well. We don't necessarily do that particular system, but I will say that getting somebody else to do the stuff that you weren't trained in, right? Like if you went to school and I know your story is a little bit mm -hmm. different, but like my, my degree is in kinesiology. My master's degree is, is, is in, is in physiology and injury prevention and performance enhancement. Like I, like that's what I know. Yep. And, and for a long time, like I, I really, um, took, uh, took it to heart that I didn't know what I didn't know about bookkeeping and business and marketing and sales and all that like i just i got like it was very very overwhelming to me and and it still can be very overwhelming i don't know anything about how to build websites that drive business yep. that's something i got from vince gabriel yep. you know i don't know anything you know uh i don't know that like email open rates are at like you know 42 percent where text message open rates are like 90 percent mm -hmm. like those like those are things that you learn along the way and you can't knock yourself for not knowing that but what you can do is you can start to really understand what remember the first thing we talked about at the beginning of this was do stuff really really well on top of that find out what you don't do really really well and find people that are willing to take money to do that, <laughs> that what you don't do really, really well. Because I didn't go, I mean, just like you, like you taught yourself business when you started at, at Gold by yourself. I never took a business course. I never had a financial planning course. I never, none of that, yeah. none, zero. You know, so you learn all that stuff on the fly. Um, and it can be overwhelming because that's a lot of information and, and there's a lot of, but you find yourself a good CPA and a good CPA, whatever you pay them will, will double. <laughs> you, you're going to make that back. Don't worry yep. because they're going to save you some money and they're going to do some, do some really good stuff for you. So but that's, before I let you do you your know, second I, I one can't. really quick, because now you got me thinking down this track. Yeah. Um, I want to just mention one other thing that was, that I felt was really valuable for me. Like I know there's a lot of controversy around the value of personality tests and those things. Apparently there's a whole documentary out on, some channel um, about kind of the darker mm. side of these things. But, you know, you've got Myers-Briggs, you've got Strength Finders, you, you got a bunch of them. But uh, there's one called the Colby A, um, and they talk about it in Traction and a host of other programs that, like, we've invested in. And the Colby A is one that showed me where I had a major error uh, in our processes. So um, if anybody's watching the Colby A, it's a implementer, they, they kind of bucket you into four categories, implementer, uh, follow through, fact finder, quick start. All right. Most entrepreneurs are quick start. They get roll in and they do it right. And they need other people to do that. I don't know anything about yep. that. Like I don't, I don't like, this is a new term for me. So I'm very interested in that. But when yep. you went through your four things, like as soon as you said quick start, I was like, I will go through a window very, very fastly and not think about, you know, yeah. I, I and a lot of people totally think that I would be that way, but I'm not. I, I'm actually a fact finder. I am a research, mm -hmm. research, re almost to a point of paralysis at times, right? So for me, yeah. I need people on my staff who are more quick start, who will say, hey, let's get this going, right? And people that I trust. But the mm -hmm. thing that I was really missing was follow through. And what I always say is, dude, I will get dude, something. We, like, we are, that, no wonder we're free. Yeah, <laughs> I will get something going. Like I always like the football analogy is good. I will get the ball to the five yard line, and then I will forget we got the ball. I just yeah, well, okay, yeah, we got the ball. Okay, but so what I found we we shifted some things, um, you know, the way that we're doing things. Instead of having like one GM, we now kind of do this by fraction. You kind of have ownership over a department. And, 
Well, one of my guys on staff is super high follow through. So there was a gap in our, our marketing follow up, right? Getting somebody from a lead to an appointment, tracking the data, reporting the data. It just wasn't adding up. And uh, the problem was I had mm -hmm. the wrong person collecting the stuff. The minute we made this switch, mm -hmm. all of a sudden the data's tracked accurately, reported accurately, we're able to make decisions off the data. So like knowing what your strength is, there's tools out there like Colby A and all these others. And I, now I'm not saying make all your decisions around these things at all, just to be clear, but don't assume that you've got the skills to move the business forward all the time. Like you, you might have to hire somebody to fill a gap there. And um, my biggest lesson over the past I don't, 10 years, I'm gonna keep saying 10 years, has been that like, I don't gotta do it all. I don't gotta do it all. And I have no shame around the fact that I can't do it all. Um, I am really good at what I'm really good at. And I live inside that space. Mm -hmm. All right, so I want you to yeah, tell me your second thing here like, in a minute. So go ahead on that, but I don't want to, you had a really good second one that I'm, I'm supposed to be taking notes on. And I feel like I've interrupted you too many times. So. Right? No, uh, I like, yeah, you like the second one won't be like, you'll know it as soon as I say it. But like, I, I, I really do, uh, just to kind of circle back to that is, it, again, be really good, but know what you're not so good at and find other people to do that for you. Um, and the, the hardest thing for me and probably the hardest thing for you was admitting to myself that I wasn't really good at something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, I knew it like, in here. I'm, I didn't I'm want not, to say it out I'm loud. <laughs> right. Like, like to, to, to like admittingly say this to, to an open, like to your staff, like, Hey, I don't, I'm not good. Yes. Um, we have a meeting every Monday at 1030 in the morning. Uh, it, it's a time where all of our morning stuff is done. Our afternoon's not coming in until after school. And, and we have a meeting with all of our administrative staff at 10 30 in the morning and there's a big board there's a huge big board that's got all of our leads and we know you know who our leads are we know who hasn't and it's, it's like a huge board and 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 if it wasn't for that meeting you know because we get all of our heads in there together all of us have different things I, i've already said like i'm a I'm I'm a quick starter and probably uh, uh, and probably a little bit of a fact finder just based on the little stuff that you have said, um, but implementation is hard for me sometimes because I don't always see the big picture or excuse me I see the big picture the small steps to get there is is difficult for me to see, um, and then follow through is a big one for myself as well. Uh, Hannah is fantastic at follow through. Yeah. She's she's amazing at it. she's very very good. Um, like she does stuff in the meeting that I was like, oh yeah, I'd like that took two seconds. I thought that that was going to take like a whole week worth of stuff, you yeah. know? Um, but, uh, but, but being in there and being in that meeting has really shown me, um, that it, it's, it's perfectly okay to, to be not good at something. And that's a, that's, that's a hard thing to do because other people, and they like to do it. Like, just like I like like I still like to coach. I still I still like to coach. I get I get really excited mm -hmm. when kids do well in the weight room. I get really excited when adults do well. I really like to coach. But like other people, like they really like to look at those fine detailed like things that that, that happen behind the scenes that allow your business to move yeah. forward. Um, but so the second thing is, <laughs> it's funny because I had this conversation yesterday. Uh, be aware of the cost that you're not aware of. And, and what I mean by that is uh, the best way I can, get, I can give you an example. So in our facility, we have our pull-up bar, right? And we have our racks and we have the perform better connectors. So <clears throat> on our racks, we've got five places to do pull-ups. And then we have another pull-up bar that we hang our rings from just to give people out there a little bit of context as to what, what our system, how our gym is a little bit set up. Well, uh, I did not think about when we wanted to do pull-ups, obviously we could hang bands and do all the assisted stuff and things of that nature. Um, but then I just automatically, and when we first started, I, I automatically assumed that people would just jump up eight feet in the air, <laughs> yeah, and grab the pull-up bar, yeah. right? And be able to like put themselves in a good pull-up position. And then you find out really quick that that that's not the case. 
and that your biggest problem in your program is not the, that actually the fact that people can't get up there. So then you go and spend two hundred and fifty dollars on step stool that will allow people to to get into the pull up machine or to get into the pull up position better. Um, and that was not a cost that anybody had budgeted for. Like nobody thought we were gonna you know go to you know find find good like nice step up stools to be able to put under the the thing when we program pull ups into our program to put under the rack so that people can get into the position better. Yeah. Um, and, and it seems like, and I'm going to use your term. It seems like in 10 years, like I'm always looking and thinking, man, I didn't realize we were going to spend money on that, yeah. but you will. And you do. And it's not all about barbells and kettlebells and, and, and plate like that stuff. You're going, you know that, but, yeah. but make yourself more aware of the costs that you don't know our costs, <laughs> which is really, really hard until you get into your business. Yeah, and for a lot of guys that I talk, because I've helped a lot of guys put together business plans and put their system together. And uh, when, you, when you're writing out expenses, it's usually like, okay, I can afford this much rent. I can afford this much utilities. But then they forget like toilet paper, now cleaning supplies. Our cleaning supplies are through the roof because of COVID protocols. Un Believe. And then like insurance, a lot of people don't mm -hmm. think about that. And then to yep. circle back to what we were talking about before is like taxes. You, you have like, you have to pre-plan for this. You have to. Yep. And there's so many people that just take in money, take in money, take in money. And they do things like they'll take money under the table to try to offset their tax burden. It's like, they're not really running a business. Like they're playing a game because those costs that, that you were talking about, they had not taken them into account. And you have to take all this into account when you build your business model, when you build your pricing model. I, I spend more time talking guys into raising their prices maybe more than anything else. Because like, you have to have money at, at the end of like, once you've allocated that income to a session or whatever, there has to be money left over for the business and, and for the future cost of the business. Not just like we got rent due tomorrow, you need to be planning for taxes for right. every person that you take income from. So I think that's a great lesson, dude. That's a great one that a lot of people I know do not think that's about at all. It, 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 you don't. And, 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 and some of that stuff sneaks up on you. And then, you you, you know, it, it's like <clears throat> all of a sudden you're like, oh, like I think heart rate monitoring is the way. Like I want to implement that into our, into our facility. Okay. Who's going to pay for the heart rate monitors? Are you, is that going to be a service that you provide your members or do you increase their prices so that they pay for their heart rate monitors? That's right. And then with that comes $150 a month, uh, you know, software package. Like, where does that, like, how do you, how are you accounting for that, for that cost? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not, it, it, and it's stuff that it, it's little stuff. Sometimes it's bigger stuff. But there's always costs that, that are associated with running a business that you would not think about. Right. And uh, the best way to do that is is to ask somebody that you know, if, if anybody's watching or, or would like to, I'll be glad to show you our register yeah. to show you what, what what we spend our money on. And and I can go back and be like, yep, we didn't know we were going to spend that this month. Yep. Hey, $3,000 to re-asphalt your parking lot because it's it's it holds water. You probably don't think about that's that, right but you will spend it yeah man that's good shit man i try to keep these things to about an hour we're we're, we're kind of coming up on that yep. time but um i knew we'd be able to have a great conversation about a bunch of stuff without me really prepping you for any of it so uh you know so, <laughs> and now, no problem yeah, sometimes sometimes i kind of let guys know what we're going to talk about but like somebody like you it's like ah, hey, let's just get on here and talk we'll, we'll guide people through these questions sure. but um, I hope any of you that kind of just jumped on, I hope you go back and, and watch the rest of this. There's a lot of great information shared. Um, Drew, I really appreciate you. I'm um, looking forward to connecting with you more here soon. Um, I got an idea that I've been sharing with Devin Gage, and uh, I'm going to talk to Brendan about it too, but I want to do like a dads and daughters retreat for dudes that are in fitness. So, and you're, you're definitely one of the guys I wanted to include oh, in that. And, let's yeah, go. So we'll, that. we'll keep talking, but yeah. appreciate you again, brother. And we shall talk soon. Hey, man, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, but it's an honor to be someone that uh, that you would feel that would, would add some benefit to your to your group. So I appreciate that. If I can do anything for any of the, any guys in your group, uh, 
you know, uh, from a phone call to uh, to uh, to looking at some of the stuff that we talked about, uh, I'll be glad to I'll be glad to do that. Uh, any friend of Andy's or anybody that's gonna that's gonna look to him for advice is is a friend of mine as well. So if I can help you out in any way, uh, please, uh, Andy, give him my information. Feel free to reach out. I'll be be glad to help out. For sure, man. All right, brother. Until next time. See ya. Bye. Bye.